One of the things that, that, that I dealt with early on was the conviction ain't overbearing. Mm, so if it ain't punching you in the face, you ain't about to change. Yeah. It's like we want God to like pick our arm up <laughs> and put it around our wife's shoulders. And right. Right. Welcome to the God Bolt Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Godbolt, with my beautiful wife, Jade Godbolt. We believe that marriage God's way is the most powerful catalyst towards healing and holiness for you and everybody after you. It's crazy that the season one comes up today with other people where like I went to go and share the link and I'm, you know, I'm looking at like the way I'm dressed and like the way we're talking, what we're talking about. And even when he's bringing, you know, these playbacks back, it actually feels like that was longer ago than it actually was. So when you say that that was just last April that we released it, almost two years since we actually filmed it, which, yeah. which is, you know, kind of help, feels more of that, I guess, is what I'm feeling. But we're so different now. And even if we would have did something like this when we wanted to, I don't think that it would be what it's going to be now because we are truly different. Our virtue has increased. Mm-hmm. Um, the way we view each other, our marriage is different. Yeah, we well, are. We Our marriage is very different like than it very was. Very different. Even when we shot the first podcast. Yes. I think we were just at the... It was like we are in... Um, our 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 parents' home still mm-hmm. married, but living with our parents. Mm-hmm. So like at that time, we were just like finally getting out of the house yeah. to actually build our marriage the way yeah. we were supposed to build our marriage yeah. that wasn't centered on what someone else feels or thinks yeah. and their experiences, but yeah. what God actually wants to do through us. And so now. We've been living on our own for a while. We've had to like (laughs) actually have the conversations and do all the things because it's us. Mm -hmm. And we've also discovered in this time that like it was always in us. Yes, it was going to take us both growing, healing, doing the work, setting boundaries. Boundaries have been such a, a, a key point and not setting boundaries to not let anyone in but setting boundaries so that there's a safe space not just for us but who god brings in to us it's so refreshing now now feels like the right time now feels like okay we are where we're supposed to be we we waited on him we are in his provision we're being obedient to what he wants us to do so yeah, this is this is fire. I mean, it it feels different. I'm just like, yeah, this feels good. Like, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, like I said, I I, I trust you, but uh-huh. it was like I've had to be focused, um, and focused, and you know, being present is something that I've been like really clinging to as of late. Um, and so in doing that, I I didn't have the time to fantasize about what we talk about, where we'd be. Well, let's. Let's setting, but. talk it out now. What are you, what are you praying for over this season? Like, what do you desire from God on this journey, specifically in this season for this podcast? Number one, that it does what He wants it to do. Going back to how different we are now, we had a we had an idea of what to pray. Not my will, but your will be done. Mm-hmm. But we've actually had the um, experience to putting that into action. And we've realized that through that, truly his ways are better than our ways. Even thinking about the season one, the relationships that came out of season one. Mm-hmm. There are so many people, not so many, but a group of people who or in our lives now mm-hmm. that was that we didn't even know yeah. prior to season one. Yeah. But they came into our lives because through season one. Yep. That are like family to us, that are very important to us, that we love dearly, that we're there for and that's there for us. So 
that was through obedience. That wasn't something that we were praying for, like God send righteous community our way. Mm-hmm. It was something that like because we were being obedient to the present, yeah, that was just a part of it. Yeah. And so, it, that's part of following his leading is he's taking care of all the things that you need before you even know that you need them. And so I think that if you're listening to this podcast, you need this. You may not know exactly all the reasons why you need this at this very moment, but trust that God orchestrates everything. So if this purpose. 100%. So if someone shared this with you or you're just stumbling upon this, it's not for nothing and it's not just by chance. There's a purpose in it. And I hope that through this, God reveals what that is to you and that it hits you at your core in your heart right. so that you can pick up whatever he's trying to deliver to you through this show. And so for me, that's all I am praying over this podcast this season is that it gives people the deliveries that God is trying to get to them, that we are simply being the messengers of of that message you know, taking it from one place to the next and making sure that it gets to you when it's supposed to get to you. So that's why your obedience, our obedience is so important because God's got a huge plan working and there's all these moving parts. And it's like, you know, we're trying to make sure that we're doing our part at the time that he tells us to do it so that you get what you need to get and not it. So it's not just about what we can receive because we're being obedient. It's not about what no, we're going to get out of all of right this. Right in front of you, yes. being present, the next thing God said to do. Right. No matter what that is. And we've, we've, that's been a big lesson in this season that, like, no matter what that is, we are better off trusting Him mm-hmm. than anything that we can possibly conjure up ourselves. Yeah. Um, two, I'm praying that this is watermelon juice for marriages. Watermelon juice for marriages? Yes. Watermelon Here juice for marriages. Go. Because uh, I was trying to think of like <laughs> one, instead of like saying all these different things, like breath of fresh, uh, hydration, all that. Watermelon juice for me, y'all, in this season, babe, don't I drink it every week? Like I go get a whole watermelon. I'll take time to cut it up. Me and the kids eat it as we're going. MJ even been eating it now. He had some for the first time a few days ago. But I put it in a Vitamix and I blend that thing, strain it seven times, and it's it's hydrating. It tastes good. It it just electrolytes the whole nine. But like it tastes best though when it's when I really, really, really need it. Like after a run or after I've been cutting our yard, y'all, because it's been hot. <laughs> it's on the what in Texas, but the work still got to get done. I'm the garden planting things, clean, whatever I'm doing. Watermelon juice, just like ah. So that's what I want it to be. I want this to be for marriages mm. because marriage is under such attack, and it grieves me, especially from the man side of things. Because I know that it starts with us. I know it starts with us. And all we got to do is get those barriers out of the way. Whatever those, like, all of our barriers are different. Mine was secrets. Like, getting the secrets out. Yeah. So that we can have the marriage that we are supposed to have. Getting the distractions out of the way. So that I can hear God for my family to lead them the way he desires for them to be led. So it's like, I want this to be like watermelon juice, like hydration, stuff that is in it that your body needs, that you don't even know that's in it, that your body needs. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I want this to be. Yeah. And that's what I believe that he wants it to be, which is why we've had to have the year and a half that we've had. To get to this point. And then three, um, hmm. God, what is three? What is three? What are you trying to 
put three on like reason things you want to pray for over the podcast yeah or maybe it's just two that's what i was about to say it may just be that or maybe it's just two yeah. <laughs> it may just be that it doesn't have to and be. i was about to say the same thing but you yeah my beautiful rib ticket i love it <laughs> so those two things if it does those like those are the two things yeah that um not just that i'm praying for but mm-hmm. that we've gotten confirmation that mm-hmm. it will be so it's just us. Well, you know, as I'm thinking, maybe three is using it and putting it to action is actually taking the delivery that you got from this podcast and doing something with it. So basically what you're saying is it ain't just like buying a watermelon, juicing it, and then put it in the fridge. Because you if you put it in the it. fridge for too long, it spoils. Y'all, yeah. let me tell y'all real quick the story <laughs> of hearing the Holy Spirit, okay? And obeying, especially on the little stuff that don't cost you nothing to obey. Like, just do it. So I'm parched. I had some coconut water. I was like, oh, I'm going to add some cantaloupe juice in the fridge. I'm like, oh, I'm going to put this cantaloupe juice in my coconut water bottle, shake it up, drink it, right? And it's my last bottle of coconut water. So I take it out the fridge. I take both out the fridge. I take the tops off. And I'm like, I'm about to pour it. Then the Holy Spirit said, try that cantaloupe juice before you pour it. <laughs> <laughs> and at first I was like, nah, that, that's just me. I was like, you know what? It wouldn't hurt me to try this before. I'm like, wow. Well, so so the, the cap that the, the, the cantaloupe containers and I pour some in the cap and I sipped it. It was spoiled, and I'm so glad. <laughs> that sounds so nasty. But I'm so That's glad like one that of the I did it. The most cringe things is to, in experience, realize that something you thought was still good is actually spoiled. Well, see, but not this time because there was like a 50 50 shot in my head. I'm like, it's been in here for about a week. Well, but I so mean, like, even the fact that you had to taste the spoiled cantaloupe juice. But. I would have rather tasted it like before that. I poured it in right. the rest of my coconut <laughs> water than to pour it in there and then have to throw both in the trash. Yeah. And all I had to do is try this one to be protected from. So it's right, like, right. it was that simple. Right. It was literally that simple. So yeah, you can do all that. You can come and you can buy your watermelon. You can cut it open and you can do all the things and put the juice in and then not drink it. Yeah. So like, one of the things that, I mean, that's like, you know, biblically, people read the Bible and then forget what they read and not put it into action as if they were looking in the mirror at their face and then walked away from the mirror and forget what you look like. Like, you have to put these things into action. There's so many conversations I have where it's like, man, I'm doing what God told me to do by sharing this, but that's all I can do. Yeah. You have to actually take it and apply it yeah. and do it. Because so, it yeah. all sounds nice and, and looks good, but if all you're doing is just sitting and listening and then continuing on about your life as if you didn't come in contact with information that you know convicted you and that you should implement in your life, but you're choosing not to because the resistance is too much or people or would because, think too much. Or or because one of the things that that, that I dealt with early on was the conviction ain't overbearing. Mm, so if it ain't punching you in the face, you ain't about to change. Yeah. It's like we want God to like pick our arm up <laughs> and put it around our wife's shoulders. And right. Right. Like making it obvious. And it's right. like, how does that get there? Right. <laughs> like, like, Lord, just do it for me. Just yeah, love her for me. When, and it's like, so, no. Okay. Prime example. Last night. I did not want to touch you. I know you didn't. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I did not want to touch you. Because um, he was mad at me, y'all. Y'all, because she spent all day yesterday doing these braids. And <laughs> she told me the night before that she would be, be spending some of the day. She said, and I quote, it's not going to take that long. <laughs> and it took her uh, what, 13, 14 hours? No, it did not. You it started at 6 a.m. I did not start at 6. I still had to get stuff together. I really didn't start till 7. Okay. You didn't finish at seven thirty, so twelve and a half hours. No, that's you not twelve hours. Break. That's ten hours. First off, seven to seven is twelve hours. Babe. 
<laughs> like, I don't know what your math look like. <laughs> math is not your strong suit, but that's 12 no, hours. No, because I was thinking I did take a break like in the middle of it. but Like 30 minutes. Neither here nor there. It, it, it took me way longer yes. than I thought it was going to take. Yes. <laughs> and it was Labor Day, so it was just me and the kids, and it was just a lot. Okay, y'all? So getting the week started, it was just a lot. So I wasn't in the mood to touch her yesterday, nothing. However... I knew that it was going to be a thing, and I prayed throughout the day for the patients to deal with this differently than I normally deal with it. Mm -hmm. And last night, I was convicted to grab you, to get close to you, even in me not wanting to immediately. Mm -hmm. And God didn't have a wind blow hard enough to, (laughs) (laughs) to push me closer to you in the bed. There wasn't a spider on this side of me, so I had to move closer. Like, it, it, it was just a conviction to love my wife. Yeah. And we are in a very different place now to where that gentleness is not just enough, but, like, that's the one that we want to listen to every single time. Yeah. And sometimes in my past— I want I wanted God to like just snatch my porn addiction, just pick it up and throw it. I, I didn't I didn't want to use my agency to make different decisions, to make a decision, period, in the way that he wanted me to, in the way that he gave me agency for. So sometimes because God is gentle, because he is loving kindness. We take that for like, well, the way I've learned it in the world, that if you want somebody to do something, you got to go over there and make them do it. You got to give them signs. Them that and it's like, no. Yeah. It, 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 with loving kindness, have I drawn thee? Right. It's always that. So, yeah, it, it it's this should, if you feel that like through, through in your heart, that, that's like, yeah, you need to move now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but. The gentleness that we pray that this podcast convicts with is like that's that's the sign to do something different, to move like him. That small, gentle voice. And I think the unfortunate part of how even a lot of pastors preach is they screaming at you. And in a way, they doing that because they've taken— Note on people only engage with me when I yell at them because that's how Mm. they've been dealt with outside of this place. And so I got to speak to them the way that they're going to engage. And and it's so dangerous. Like that, that whole, this is how I experience it. So this is how I, it's just that is literally playing God. It's playing God because you are deciding in that moment. That the way you think that they need to be talked to takes precedence over his spirit. And his spirit is just because he talks to you in a certain type of way. Because I've heard people say like, oh, well, God talks to me like this and he going to. And it's like he very well may be. I can't discern the Holy Spirit for you. But we what know I what do the Holy know, Spirit ain't. The Holy, <laughs> so I, people say I, I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but what, <laughs> but what we do know is the character of the Holy Spirit is literally based off of it's Jesus. the character of the Father. So or, and, 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 loving and, kindness. And loving kindness and gentleness and comfort and patience and long-suffering are all of its fruit. So where in that is like— this accusatory pointing the finger, There's yelling only one accuser, intensity. And that's Satan. God don't accuse us of anything. And the thing is, this is not to point fingers at anyone, but it is to just pose the question and the I'm thought. And. To pose the question and the thought of, are you more likely to listen to somebody who is screaming at you With truth, or are you more likely to pay attention to somebody who's speaking truth to you, but calmly and gently? And if you answer the first one, then I would 
encourage you to dive into deeper as to why. Because if that is the way you've been brought up and that's what you're used to, then that means that you have been influenced by the world. And so Mm. in order to grow and to really understand who the father is, you have to understand what loving kindness is and what gentleness is and why you don't need to puff your chest up and scream at people or even raise your voice to get your point across. That's been something for me that I've grown to understand so much in the past like couple years is that I don't need to put on this strength in order to get what I'm trying to get across to somebody If I need to say something and I'm being specific, then I will be stern in my voice. I will be direct. I have no issue with that. But I definitely felt this influence from the world to be, you know, the witty, strong, kind of petty, but like low key petty. So you can't tell unless you know you, if you know, kind of thing, but like very quick to like cut somebody down. And or point out somebody's flaw and that showed that you were in some way, shape or form more dominant, more powerful than someone else. And that happens in so many different spaces, including at church. And I think that for me as a person, this has become something that is like core essential to myself, to my my platform as an influencer, but also like us as a couple and myself as a mom, a wife, is to realize that I do not need to exert myself. I don't need to exert myself. If God has put something in me to deliver to somebody, then I don't need to figure out ways to persuade the person to understand what I'm saying. Because if God brought me to you to share something with you, he's already worked on you. And he's created this opportunity for us to to gather and to communicate and so i don't need to like do a lot to get something across if you want to know more i will continue on as far as you allow me to go and as far as the father will allow me to go but i think that we are very quick to appreciate people who are witty and clever and can, you know, out wordsmith somebody else in a, you know, communication debate. But at the end of the day, where has that actually gotten us as a generation? We're not even supposed to be debating. It, it's like to your point, what it is, is manipulation. And something that I've been working on tremendously is that. And the reality is if Manipulation taints choice. So I say you can choose to do this or you cannot, Mm -hmm. but I'm strong arming you in the direction that I think that you should go. So it's taking more for you to move away from that versus being gentle, being kind in my approach. Mm -hmm. Every time Christ talked to people, no matter what the setting was, no matter what was on the line, you got gentleness. Mm -hmm. You never got, uh, let me yell at you and, you know, do all, like, no, and, I, and, I'm going and to speak for the those, truth. And for those who want to talk about the whole flipping tables thing, even even if we want to debate on whether or not he actually flipped the tables or not, that is one instance out of every other no, he didn't flip the table, his. but that's but another that's conversation. Another conversation. For another day. Not, that's, that's another. Point. <laughs> well, you brought it up. I brought I it up. I wasn't even gonna bring it up. I'm trying to get to the point of why yeah, I brought I, it up, yeah, which I, I, was yeah. either way, that was an anomaly of his character. That was a rarity in his character. It wasn't his all the time. This is how I am, and I'm just sometimes or rarely gentle and kind. Yeah. It's not so people like and to say tables wasn't in red. So <laughs> so saying that it's like a lot of us will cling to the exception when that is not the norm. And so that's we, a spirit too. <laughs> that's a spirit too. But yeah, like we cling, we cling to the exception, but the norm is gentleness. So like how we talk to people 
and allowing them to choose how far they want to go, mm-hmm. whether or not they want to listen, all of those things, because it actually will mean more for them to actually mm-hmm. change the other way. Yeah. Because it won't be because of something that I said, but yeah. because of something the Holy Spirit con- um, um, confirmed through me. And also, what we don't understand sometimes in our living worldly being, you know, young spiritually or weakened spiritually is that we will, because somebody's yelling something at me or saying something and they're telling me and it's got some truth in it, we will then make it about, well, if I don't do this the way that such and such told me, they're going to be mad at me. So then the truth becomes about somebody else and not about you. So you start to pick up on things like, yeah, they're, they're telling me to be this way and they're telling me to change my life like this. And they're, and my pastor said X, Y, and Z, but, and I don't want to disappoint my pastor and the people around me. So I'm going to stick to, it can't be about that. It has to be. They ain't going to be there. No, it has has to be about how much do you love the father Mm -hmm. to follow him? How much do you love Christ to follow him and to allow him to guide your life and to listen to him, obey his Holy Spirit so that you can actually live the life that was created for you. That has nothing to do with anybody else. God can use people and God will allow even people that are not delivering his message in the way he saw fit He can still use that and do something fruitful in your life with it. But it just gets hairy when it's delivered in such a way where because we don't want to do the bad thing or the wrong thing or we're trying to be better and this person is looming over us, whether it be virtually, whether it be spiritually, whether it be physically, we don't want to do anything wrong. So we're just going to do what they say because they said it. And it's like, you're still missing it. It's got to be because in your heart, you desire a closer relationship. I did not change my walk or, or, or change myself or pursue Christ because you did. Maybe in the beginning, I was like, oh, okay, he's doing something different. But God had already been working on me my whole life, trying to get me to this place he used you, he used our marriage to get me closer to him, even in those moments when you started being more spiritual and being more focused on your Bible study and all those things. And I was like, I'm good. I'm good on that. I don't need that. I'm good. Kind of, but even to that point though, like I didn't force you. I didn't force mm-hmm. it on. I didn't make yeah. you do anything. There were things. moments when you tried to, and then you realized very quickly that that wasn't gonna, yeah, that wasn't w- gonna work. But that wasn't the way. Yeah, um, because he doesn't force us to do anything. No, he doesn't force us to choose him. He does not force us to do and, what he says. Hold on. And he takes it a step further. He respects your choice. Yeah. So a lot of times, uh, I've heard this too. Like you know, God, God gonna make this happen to you. God, gonna, it's like no, it's. If I'm in my daddy's house, and we use this analogy during the young cut, if I'm in my daddy's house and he has these rules to our, for example, don't run in the street. Well, if I'm in the house, I don't even have to worry about running in the street because I'm in the house. Mm -hmm. But when I go outside, I'm not supposed to go in the street. Mm -hmm. If I go in the street, then that means I am now vulnerable to outside things that are not inside of my daddy's house, whether that be getting hit by a car, whether that be falling and scabbing up my knee, whatever those things are. He didn't make those things happen. Now, I've said this before. If he was to see me in the street and then get in his car and come hit me on purpose to teach me a lesson, that's not a good father. Mm -hmm. However, if I'm not in the street, I don't have to worry about that. God is not getting in his car to hit me because I'm in the street, but I am now more susceptible to the enemy's attacks because I'm outside of the will of my father. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the God Boat Life podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us a DM or leave us a review wherever you're listening. We really appreciate having you with us on this journey.